it's amazing how many Christians can be made spiritually ineffective just by somebody calling them a fanatic or homophobic or too religious. Or radical. Or radical. Let me just talk about those two things real quickly. People, people have said to me many times that I'm a fanatic. And you know what? Do I take a fact? I, I say, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate that compliment. Fanatic comes from a Latin word that meant literally inside the temple. And it was applied to people that spent all their time in the temple. Well, how only we are the temple. Yes, are. It's about, oh, you're too, too religious. Praise God, may I never be too religious. But I want to be conscious of walking in the spirit, living that righteous life all the time. So it's natural, and I mean that in the most technical sense of the word, to desire. This is what mankind, to desire the approval of men, to be accepted as part of the group. This is why, why do you think teenagers want to be different and they all dress alike? And why do you think I mean, people follow the, the trends? And honestly, think about it. You know, one person goes unshaven for a couple of days or and, and is in a movie, and then all of a sudden everybody's unshaven. Well, because it's like you want to be part of the group, part of the clique. You want the approval of men, okay? That's natural. But we're not called to be natural. We're supernatural. Right. Well, it's true. So we don't need to be accepted by the group, which is why the Spirit of God moved the Apostle Paul to write to Timothy, be diligent or study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. Second Timothy chapter two, verse fifteen. We need the approval of God, not the approval of men. And the simple fact of the matter is living a righteous life is more often than not not going to get you the approval of men. How how well did that work out for Jesus? I mean, you can't get more righteous than Jesus. So everybody said, Oh, what a wonderful guy. No. They said, crucify him. That's what happened. What Paul taught, Paul lived. Okay? And later on, he would say, write to the church at Galatia. And he said to the Galatians, For I, am I now seeking the favor of men or of God? Am I striving to please men? If I was still trying to please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. Galatians 1.10. You know, what makes you think you can have both? What makes you think you can please men and please God? It's being in the world. Sure. One foot in heaven, one foot in the world. I don't know where you are, or where you live, or where you're watching this from, but I can tell you, odds are good that it's someplace in this world. And this world is not pleasing to God. You know, when he created this, he created the heavens and the earth. He, he spoke light into existence. He spoke everything into existence. He looked down and he said, it's good. And then Adam sinned and fell away, and it and the earth was cursed because of Adam's sin. A stain that only could be washed clean by the blood of the lamb. But it, that blood of the lamb, you know, it, it came down that cross and it hit the ground, but it didn't make the ground. It didn't save the ground. No. But it'll save you if you trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, shed for the redemption of your sins. Okay. This is not a. This world is not pleasing to God, and you can't make it pleasing to God. You know, as we film this now, we're in that election cycle here in the United States of America. You're not going to elect anybody who's going to make this a better world. You're not. Now, am I going to make a political statement? You bet your boots I am. I'm about to, because there are so many Christians who believe that if we can just elect the right guy, everything's going to be all right. God's going to fix everything. Well, you know what? That's not what God says. And God watches over his word to perform it. The word of God, Jesus Christ, is the same yesterday, today, and yes, forever. It is unchanging. The, the flower fades, the grass withers. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. Do you really want to see this land healed? God has a plan. And it's not, it's not on getting out and getting the vote out and electing the right guy. God's plan is this. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves, they'll pray and seek, seek God, 
and turn from their wicked ways, our wicked ways, then he'll hear and he'll heal the land. Yeah. It's not about getting the, getting those unsaved people out there to act differently. Why would you expect an unrighteous person to act righteously? That's stupid. That That is stupid. But God has every right to expect righteousness and righteous behavior from us. Because we have been cleansed, purged. Blessed are the, blessed are the pure in heart, right? <laughs> That's right. So the answer is for us to do exactly that, humble ourselves, repent of our wicked ways, not, not the world's, and God will, God will act. But we seem to have come up with a better plan. So if you believe that, you're, uh, you, better, you better go have, better dash off, not to, the, not to the voting booth, but to your prayer closet. God's love. Above the heavens God's love Deeper than the sea His love Higher than the mountains God's love Always watching over you Ooh.